In many cases, when using Simpson's rule to approximate a definite integral, there will be an error. However, as n increases, the error will decrease. And remember, for Simpson's rule, n must be even. So in this question, we want to determine how large should n be to guarantee that Simpson's rule approximation of the given definite integral is accurate within 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. So to answer this question, we'll be using the error bounds formula given here for Simpson's rule, where the error is less than or equal to the quantity b minus a raised to the fifth power, where a and b are the limits of integration, divided by 180 and to the fourth times the absolute value of the maximum function value of the fourth derivative on the closed interval from a to b. So there's really two steps to this problem. Once we set up this inequality, we'll have to work to find this maximum function value. Once we find this value, we'll then solve this inequality for n. So to begin to set this up, looking at the right side of this inequality, we would have the quantity b minus a to the fifth, or one minus negative two to the fifth, divided by 180 and to the fourth, times the absolute value of the maximum function value of the fourth derivative on the closed interval from negative two to positive one. We want this to be accurate within one-tenth, and therefore we want this to be less than or equal to one-tenth, which will write as a fraction. Now let's go to the next slide and work on finding this maximum function value. Remember, it's going to be the absolute value of this maximum. So if it happens to be negative, we are going to take the absolute value. So we'll first start with our function f of x, which is the integrand function, and work to find our fourth derivative. So the first derivative would be negative four x to the third minus six x squared plus 24 x plus two minus zero and the second derivative function would be negative 12 x squared minus 12 x plus 24 plus zero. And the third derivative function would be negative 24 x minus 12. And notice how our fourth derivative function is going to be a constant function. It's equal to negative 24. Remember our goal here is to find the absolute value of the maximum function value of the fourth derivative function on the closed interval from negative two to positive one. But because the fourth derivative is a constant function, we would just have a horizontal line through y equals negative 24. And therefore, in this case, the absolute value of the maximum function value would just be the absolute value of negative 24, which would be positive 24. So we're going to use positive 24 in our error bounds formula. So going back to the previous slide, we'll now substitute 24 for this value and then solve this for n. So here we'd have three to the fifth, which is 243 divided by 180 n to the fourth times 24 is less than or equal to 1 tenth. 243 times 24 is equal to 5,832. And now from here, let's clear the fractions from the inequality. One way of doing this would be to multiply both sides of the equation by 180 and to the fourth. Notice on the left side, this simplifies nicely to one. And on the right side, these two do share a common factor of 10. This simplifies to one, this simplifies to 18 and to the fourth. So now we have 5,832 is less than or equal to 18n to the fourth. Now if we divide both sides by 18, we would have 342 is less than or equal to n to the fourth. And now we'll take the fourth root of both sides of the equation. We'll have to get a decimal approximation for the left side. So we would have n is greater than or equal to approximately 4.24 four 
or if we want, we can write this as n on the left side, n is greater than or equal to 4.24. Remember, n is a number of subintervals using Simpson's rule, and n must be even. So notice how four would not satisfy this inequality, and we can't use five because five is not even, and therefore to answer the question, we would have to use n equals six to guarantee that Simpson's rule approximation of this integral would be accurate within one-tenth. So that is one thing to be careful about when determining n for Simpson's rule, n must be even. I hope you found this explanation helpful.